Jonathan and I'm Justin. And we did an RC car control system, but it's not really a remote control car anymore. And it's a controlled car. Oh, uh, we snapped some photos of it. Yeah, this is a car, this is like our signal and power distribution board. And then this is a speed controller. This is the servo, it's kind of hard to see this stuff. And this is the motor. And then that's the bracket that I built to mount the circuit board to the car. And requirements basically is just navigate the RC car using two PWM signals. And the parts we did, we implemented it with were servo, DC motor, and the motor controller with an H bridge for dual direction. And our Nexus board, and then I used the steel flat bar to make the bracket out of, and then the power board. And then our software was the Xilinx CDK, and two GPIOs, and two timer counters, and an interrupt controller. So what we implemented, um, in, in all of the cases that we've had in lab, we only used one interrupt directly tied to the, uh, the Nexus port, or the Microblaze IP port. Um, in this case, since we have two pulse with modulated signals, uh, we have two timers running, so we have two interrupts that can possibly be tracked. So we implemented a time time interrupt controller that basically is a priority queue. It takes in both of those signals, and uh, if you happen to get two interrupts at the exact same time, then it will judge based on which one has higher priority, which interrupt goes through first. Uh, the way our signals are generated, you usually won't end up with that case unless you're steering the motor and driving the car at the, uh, the same servo rate. So it, it's possible to hit that time, which is why we implemented the interrupt controller, in which case steering takes precedence so that it doesn't. Uh, if steering was extremely vital, you wouldn't crash into stuff. And this is our uh, block diagrams. And we have the microblades hooked up to our two GPIOs, the LED we use to display the power like of the motor. Like if it were full power, all the LEDs are lit up. If it's half power, then half the moment, and so on. And then we have our timer counter for the steering going down to the servo, and the motor going down to the driver, and then down to the DC motor. And that's about it. So for software, it's actually fairly simple as far as the flow of it goes. Um, you start off in your main loop, you initialize the timer counters with whatever values you want. Um, much like the other group, we found that our servos operate in like about a 22 millisecond refresh rate. Uh, we have we set your period, uh, and then you can also set the duty cycle of them, and they operate the same way. They operate in like a 0.8 millisecond to a 1.8 millisecond range. Um, one of the features we implemented in software was we scaled that so we didn't have to, that corresponds to four to 8% uh, duty cycle, and that really only gives you, if you're working in milliseconds, that really only gives you about five uh, ranges to play with, five values in your range to play with. So we implemented software scaling where you can drive a motor at zero to 100%, but those that zero to 100% really scales down like between 4.02 or whatever it happens to be. So you can drive a motor at 100% speed, but it's only 8% duty cycle. Uh, so then you, you initialize the car with, uh, we started with 50-50, which is the dead center for both servos, so the motor doesn't spin and the steering wheel isn't going anywhere. And then you can um, program in a path that you want it to do, circle and square, uh, any any trick you might want it to do. So the car, like you said before, it was done with two different PWMs, one for the motor and one for the steering. And our PWM period, it might have actually been 20 milliseconds, but we actually measured it before we implemented anything, be 22, so we just mimicked that to make things easier. And it varied from 0.8 to 1.8 milliseconds, and 1.4 was right in the middle. Uh, and then, I don't know if we want to talk about that. Yeah, um, so we have, the way we have it set up right now is, um, we have a really easy to use C interface with the car, so you can, um, you got four functions. You can tell it to turn, go straight, stop, or uh, just turn the wheels without actually driving the car. Uh, this allows you to really easily in software, you can write yourself a function that you can say, turn left for this amount of time, turn right for this amount of time, stop, you know, turn the wheels, then prepare to go. And so it's really easy. You can interface this with pretty much anything with only four function calls. It's a really lightweight but uh, powerful system. <laughs> yeah, I 
just made the signal and power distribution off of perf port just so it was easy to connect things up and with the existing plugs and things. And this is our scope capture when we were figuring out how to operate the <coughs> servos and the motor. And that's just the left, middle, and right. And you can't really see the printout on there, but it was uh, at 1.8 for full right or full four, and then middle was 1.3, and then left was 0.8. And then that's my counting bracket that I welded together. And, uh, no. Well, it's going to start backwards first. Oh, okay. So, uh, so what we, we implement it, you program it, and it waits for about three to five seconds so that you can unplug the USB cable and just let it go so it doesn't take your laptop with you. Right. So I'm going to program the board here. Just going to unplug it. And then the software is going to start driving it. So you can see on the LEDs, it's got um, the amount of speed that the motor's currently being run at. So it's about half speed there. And there you go. <laughs> so it works better on the thicker carpet because it's not traveling so fast, but you get the general idea. Got a nice bumper on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's we, uh, we smashed up a bunch of crap. <laughs> um, but it's, it's obviously easier to run in a bigger space. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you were to take it outside, it'll run a, a nice circle. We did it out in my driveway and it runs a nice pretty circle. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's fixed programs then. 